Welcome, in this video I'm going to show you how you can perform a Wilcoxon signed array test for paired data using Microsoft Excel. Uh, this actually means to perform the test almost manually, uh, but of course using Excel as a um, glorified calculator. So uh, it's going to take a little while, so bear with me. I've written down all the steps. My data is in column A and B, uh, highlighted in yellow. And let's get started. The first thing we need is to remove the pairs for which both variables have the same score. In other words, if they're ties or if there's any missing value. And we can do that by using the OR command combined with IF. So IF and then OR. So if OR is first the ties, if these two would be the same. Or if uh, A4 is uh, empty, which can be done by using a double quotation sign twice. Uh, or if uh, B4 is uh, empty, in close the OR. In any of those cases, so if this results in a true, then simply write down uh, no. And otherwise, uh, write down yes. So this way we know which ones will actually be used. Now you can copy paste this down, Control C, Control V, or perhaps double click on the lower right corner, and then it should actually copy paste it all the way down. Uh, for some strange reason, it's going one too far actually now. Okay, then uh, determine the absolute value of the difference between the two variables for each uh, case. So in other words, uh, the difference between these two in absolute terms, but only of course if we should be using it. So uh, is if uh, this one equals no and then uh, nothing otherwise the absolute value ABS that's a small little function in Excel this one minus that one and close all the parentheses so that takes care of step 2 copy paste down again then determine the absolute value we've done that step 3 determine the sign uh, the sign is actually just a zero if it's a tie, a negative if it's uh, ne uh, minus one if it's negative, and plus one if it's positive. And again, as uh, before, is if we shouldn't be using it, then it should be no. Um, if it's no, sorry, then nothing. Otherwise, uh, simply do the sign. Uh, S N um, is it S N G no sign. Sign is actually the function of this one minus uh, this one. So we're assuming you do X minus Y each time, and then close and copy paste that down again. <coughs> Sorry. And then finally, we can determine the rank. Um, of the absolute uh, difference from a uh, low to a high using average uh, average rank for ties. So we simply should be doing uh, rank and of course first if this one equals no then actually nothing and otherwise we can use the function rank dot average and then rank the this value among all of them, so let's select the entire column D. You can do this if there's nothing up or below this column, otherwise simply select the entire specific range. And then we want them in ascending order and we close all the parentheses again. And now copy paste uh, down. Then multiply the sign with the rank, so that's going to be pretty straightforward. That's again if, as you might notice they all start with if, if this one equals uh, no, then nothing. Otherwise, simply do this one times the sign, and then copy paste that down. And then finally we get to step 6. Determine the number of the absolute sum and the average for both the negative and the positive ones. So, um, simply determining how many we actually have. So, I can say positive equals uh, sum if or count if, uh, sum if, and the range is going to be all my signs. And if it's a 1, then it was positive. So 
that's one uh, copy paste this down and then change f2 and then change this to minus one and I get the number of negative pairs and actually I want uh, this as an absolute value because it's simply the number of so that cannot really be negative so I have six pairs that are negative so that leaves a total of 38 then the sum which is the again the absolute value and then sum if and then I can say uh, the sum of the it's about the ranks eh? so sum if uh, gg uh, if that is oh, semicolon and then if it's bigger than a zero then I get the sum of the positive ones and copy paste down and then I can say sum if it's smaller than zero then there are 91 so the average is then simply the sum divided by the number and copy paste it down now determine if the frequency for each uh, unique rank and that goes slightly different for the first one than for the other ones so the first one is simply going to t say well is unless the first one by coincidence is a uh, no then it shouldn't be doing anything otherwise it should be saying count if and then how many times do we actually have that rank so count if this range and then the criteria is this specific value so we have 22 times a rank of 13 now the next one underneath we need to actually uh, take in consideration that we perhaps already have that rank once so in that case it becomes slightly trickier uh, as usual we begin with if uh, this one equals uh, no then of course we're not going to be doing anything otherwise we need a if again count if and then the range is going to be this one until that one and the first one of these two I want to block uh, f4 and then it puts dollar signs in there so if this one occurs already if this count uh, if in this range if this one occurs in there if that is more than zero so it occurs already then we already counted how often it occurs so we shouldn't be doing anything otherwise it should perform a count if on the entire column on uh, this one so that way we're not counting any of them double so it looks a bit scary but it doesn't show up anything now because already the 13 is in there copy paste it down so here's the 29 so that's a 10 13 already done 29 already done 37 is new so we really get the frequencies only then for each tight rank cube the frequency and subtract it once so here is if and slightly different now if this one is empty then don't do anything otherwise take this value cube it and then subtract it once right and that completes our full table um, as you might notice there is a bit of an oddity going down here so I'll delete those and that finally completes the table so we can start working on actually getting some results in finally after almost 10 minutes um, choose a test statistic which is either the minimum of the two sums from uh, step 6 so either the minimum of uh, these two or simply the positive one so depending on the program you're using they will either say well we always take the positive one or what you can do is take the minimum of the two which is simply the minimum of these two and uh, it might be useful if you do go for the minimum that you know that it's from the positive or the negative so is uh, if um, this one is uh, smaller than this one well then we're taking the uh, positive ones and otherwise we're taking the negative ones so in this case 
it's the minimum would be of the negative ones. Then determine the hypothesized sum of the ranks uh, in the population. So in this case, that's going to be this 38 multiplied by this 38 again plus 1 and then divided by 4. So 370.5. For the variance, we have this scary looking formula going on, but if we simply go over it step by step, it's the 38 times this 38 again plus 1, and then times, and then 2 times this 38 plus 1, and then divide all of that by 24. Determine the correction for the ties, which is simply the sum of that last column we made. So equals the sum of column I. And that had all of those things in there. And ooh, I got a bit of a... There we go. And then determine the variance corrected for tied ranks. Um, so that's going to be the original variance minus the ties divided by 48 and then the standard error is simply the square root out of this uh, variance and then we can determine the z value which will be the w and the w is um, in this case uh, where was it uh, it's our uh -oh. uh, I think it was our test statistic yeah minus the mu, which was this one, and then divided by the standard error, which was adjusted. So that gives 4.25. And then finally we can calculate the significance two times, and then 1 minus uh, the old function norm s dist, and then take the absolute value just in case of this value, and close everything up or if you like is two times and then a one minus and then the new function norm dot s dot dist and again take the absolute value of the z value and in this case oh, we also need to specify that we want it cumulative and that should give us the same result now you might have noticed I've hidden two small columns in here um, that's because I also once made a user-defined function for that. If you're interested in this uh, user-defined function, let me know. Uh, it's a small little function I wrote myself, which produces the same results, as you can see. Uh, so you won't have to do all these steps manually. But, um, okay, it's, uh, uh, leave it a comment uh, below, and I'll, uh, I'll see if I can provide the link to uh, this file with the macro for this function. Finally, uh, uh, you might want to show this as a number, so on the home ribbon, um, change it to a number, usually with three decimals, while well it's uh, below 0 0.0001 in this case, so that's by most people uh, considered significant, so the two are significantly different from each other. Uh, I simply used the positive uh, ones, so that means that x was bigger than uh, y, um, and then you can draw conclusions from that. Okay, uh, thank you for watching, and uh, sorry that it took so long, but I don't know any faster way of doing this.